Josep Luis Trapero appeared in the Spanish capital along with two leading figures in the Catalan independence movement. Spanish authorities believe Trapero's 17 000 strong force, the Masos de Esquadra, didn't do enough to prevent Sunday's vote from taking place. In Barcelona, representatives of the main political parties in Catalonia were due to meet later Friday to discuss their next moves. The Spanish Constitutional Court banned a session of the Catalan Parliament planned for Monday in an apparent attempt to prevent Catalan President Carles Puigdemont's expected declaration of independence. A new session to debate the current political situation would be held on Tuesday, a Parliament spokesman said. Trapero did not speak to reporters after he emerged from court. No immediate action was taken against him, but the sedition investigation continues. Jordi Quixart, head of separatist group Omnium Cultural, told reporters after his court appearance that he exercised his right not to answer the judges. I don't recognize the authority of this court over this, he said. He criticized the Spanish state for attempting to solve a political issue through the courts. We are convinced that, sooner rather than later, the Spanish state will have to accept dialogue, he said. Sanchez, president of the Catalan National Assembly, told reporters he had denied the sedition allegations in front of the judge. We are convinced that we didn't commit any kind of crime. I only declared in my defense to make clear the legitimacy of a peaceful, nonviolent demonstration. The sedition inquiry relates to violent protests on September 21 and 22 in the build-up to the October 1 referendum. Apology for Police Violence Madrid's representative to Catalonia apologized Friday for the violence which occurred during the vote. In the first note of contrition by a Spanish government representative, Milo told broadcaster Catalan TV3, I insist, I'm really sorry, I want to apologize because I wouldn't wish anything like that to happen to any person, the fact that people got hit and required assistance. Only one of the 2.2 million people who voted remains in hospital, he noted. Milo added that there was only trouble in 13 of the 2,315 polling stations that opened in defiance of a ban. In those 13 polling stations there were human barriers that surrounded the policemen who were unable to leave, he said. The Catalonia crisis is likely to be the main topic of discussion Friday at the weekly meeting of the Spanish cabinet. It's not yet clear what course of action the Spanish government will take if the Catalan government goes ahead with a declaration of independence. I will do what's best for Spain and when I think it's the right time, Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy told Spanish news agency F on Thursday. I will listen to all the positions, but the final decision will be mine. Asked Thursday whether the parliamentary session planned for Monday would take place, Poog Demont said, that is for Parliament to decide. But the Constitutional Court has no right to impede a democratic Parliament session, which by law is inviolable. Poog Demont is expected to meet with an independent commission for mediation and dialogue on Friday evening. Any declaration of independence by the Catalan government would be a test of nerve for Rajoy's government, which could seek to use emergency powers. If Madrid decides that Catalonia is acting unconstitutionally, Rajoy could impose direct rule on Catalonia under Article 155 of the Spanish Constitution. Such a step would be seen as a last resort as it would almost certainly require officers from the Guardia Civil, the National Security Force, to be deployed again on the streets of Catalonia. Catalonia versus Spain, here's what could happen next divided region The referendum has exposed deep divisions in Catalonia. Some 90% of voters backed a split from Spain but turnout was only about 42%. Rallies both for and against independence are planned for the weekend. In an indication of the uncertainty gripping the region, Banco Sabadell, one of Catalonia's largest banks, announced Thursday that it would move its registered headquarters outside the Catalonia region to the eastern city of Alicante. There are concerns that other businesses could follow suit, threatening stability in Spain's most economically productive region.